seven yard touchdown run by the magical quarterback Lamar Jackson. Big Keith Trailer, look at him rumble. Episode 7 of Utter Punts is here, hitting you harder than Devontae Adams dumps cameramen on their asses. The 2022 season's not disappointing. We're blitzing the conversation all the way to the Super Bowl. This is not Detroit, man. This is the Super Bowl. Touchdown! No! No! 24 yard attempt. Oh, he hits the upright. It's no good. Derek Johnson, the all time leading tackler of the history of the Chiefs. That's impossible! The Cardinals have knocked the Vikings out of the playoffs! Utter Punts is an NFL podcast made by UK fans of the National Football League. We love this game and we know it inside out. Check out our prediction record if you're in any doubt about that. 21 nailed and just five slip-ups heading into week six of the NFL season. Not too shabby. I'm sports journalist and Giants fan Liam Bradford. I've got two more Utter Punts alongside me. Uh, down in Birmingham normally, but not today. It's Vikings fan Dave Keane. Hello, all. Unfortunately, the five of the 21 and five that we had was due to me having a broken little toe. Uh, David Hay taught me by excuse. Us Daves have got to stick together. <laughs> Alongside me in Manchester is Ravens man Dan Horton. Yeah, and just in case you wondered, Justin Tucker also sings opera and puts up a little prayer every time he takes the 1.3 seconds. This will all come out later in the podcast. You'll figure it out. Coming up, the big game reviews, a look ahead to week six, and we'll help you make some money with our big game triple bet builder. Just nobody mentioned the train, yeah? Thanks for being with us. Yes, yes, welcome along to Utter Punts. We are up to episode seven, uh, which is... I'll be honest, it's a miracle that we've made it this far. Uh, It's also a miracle that we've still got such a positive pick ratio. 21 and 5 we are. Now, if you've finished a season 21 and 5, you'd be absolutely delighted. Namely because they don't play that many games, which is just a thing of beauty. Uh, I'm delighted to say that the two punts are back with us. Although, uh, Dave Keane is not in Birmingham this week. Instead, you are in the beautiful city of... Barcelona. Barcelona. Left my stag do, left my stag do on the Sunday and flew straight to Palma de Mallorca uh, and then straight from Mallorca to Barcelona. That sounds like an absolutely magnificent trip. We we can't talk about anything that happened either on the stag do or on your trip to Palma stroke Barcelona. So we're going to move straight on to the headlines this week, if that's all right with everybody. Uh, the the less we say about what happened uh, in Cork, I, I can talk about it. So if you want to inbox me, that's fine. I'll yeah, let you know everything. I, I mean, that's understandable. Please don't expect a reasonable response from him. Most of it will be made up. Uh, right, let's start with the headlines. Uh, Matt Rule, uh, first first coach to go this season from the Panthers. Look, Dan, why is he gone? Is the first question. The second question is, who's going to come in to replace him? Well, the I think the, the current offensive coordinator, which I think is Steve Wilkes, isn't it? Who was at the Cardinals? Is is going to step in, and he'll be there till the end of the season. I'm, I'm fairly sure of that. Why is he gone? It, it, it's a difficult transition, and it, you, know, you come out of the, the these the guys come out of the college game into the NFL, and unless they get the the perfect setup, it, it, it's very difficult for them. And and you know, the, the four quarterbacks I can name that Matt Rules had are Teddy Bridgewater. Um, PJ Walker, Sam Darnold, and, and Baker Mayfield, and ultimately they they tried to get Matt Stafford. They didn't get him. He basically said he didn't want to go there, and they tried to get. They were in the uh, the top, the Sean Watson sweepstakes as well, and didn't, and didn't land that. So they've tried, they failed, and ultimately it's fallen on Matt Rule as a as a consequence. Bit of a shame, isn't it, Dave? Not to be given a little bit more time. It it never seemed to be working with Matt Rule. Uh, I remember Teddy Bridger also when he was the uh, quarterback for those guys. When he left, he suggested that they spend a little bit more time drilling red zone uh, because apparently they didn't used to actually do that much red zone training. Also, game situation awareness, that kind of thing. It's so vital in the NFL to be getting the, the, the extra inches here and there. And I don't think he ever truly made the transition from being a college coach uh, in terms of the way he, he seemed to be setting up his training regimen, rotating through staff. Um, I think they've made the call possibly a little too late. Maybe they should have moved on in the off-season, but obviously 
as as we know, the actual payoff there is prohibitive. I mean, forty million dollars is going to get paid, um, which is a lot of money. But he was very very successful in the college game with Baylor and Temple. Um, so two different colleges. Um, I, I can see him being a, a big name hire for for another program at some point next year, uh, and we won't be without his name. There will be many a player coming through from his college into the NFL. I'd have thought. Um, and, and maybe he will have another cycle where he has another crack at the NFL at some point in the future. But right now, it's time's over. I guess the the joy of this is it, it gets the rumour mill starting. It gets the speculation going about who potentially could come in and take over, who could potentially make a return to the NFL. So complete blue sky thinking here. If you could have any former NFL head coach back into the NFL, which former NFL coach would you have back? Dan? I think I'd go Bill Walsh, just for some of his comments. It'd be great fun. Okay. Uh, and what about you, Dave? If you could have any former NFL coach back, who would it be? I'll, I'll spin this slightly. And uh, I'd actually have a future NFL head coach. And so if, if the Panthers could have anybody, they should just turn their franchise over to Tom Brady. <laughs> just do it right now. Well, do it next year. Keep, keep the current regime in place. So the Dolphins have that plan. They're, they're tapping him up for it. Um as we know, Jesus, in fact, they lost draft picks, but they've gone down a different avenue now with, with McDaniels. Uh, he's doing well enough that I can't see him wanting to move on from him. Uh, so Tom Brady could be at a loose end looking for a club next year with plenty of time on his hands. Why not Tom Brady? Why not Tom Brady? Never bet against Brady is one of I'm the... Not sure he'd do much for the defence. No, I mean, I suppose it's quite easy... No, it's not. Let's just move on from this. Uh, headline number two. Hey, Mike with him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, headline two, Devante Adams. Now, this has set the Utter Punts WhatsApp group going this afternoon. If you haven't seen this, Devante Adams, Raiders losing, not happy, marching down the tunnel. All of a sudden, cameraman steps out in front of him, not looking where he's going, and Devontae Adams sticks him six feet into touch, just absolutely smashes him, gives him a good old shove, and he goes rolling down the floor as Devontae Adams walks up the tunnel. Now, for me, it's fair play. You get him away, and I'm losing. I'm going to move you out of my way. Now, that being said, I'm not sure everybody's entirely in agreement with me. What did you make of it, Dan? I, I'm in complete agreement with you. Get out of the way is pretty much the way I would tag that line. Um, he just caught two fit over 50-yard touchdown passes. And then on the final play of the game, he was wide open and got tripped up by his teammate. He, he's probably a bit annoyed. Um, why are people just running around in front of players when they come off the field? It's silly. Um, although I did, uh, he, he did one of those things that really annoy me. Okay, so he did that sort of fake apology. So on Twitter, he said to the guy who I pushed over, if you're reading this, Please accept my apologies. Just find the guy and apologise to him. It'd probably be over and done with, wouldn't it? He did exactly the same thing in the locker room afterwards yeah. where he went, uh, look, I, I'd like to say sorry to the guy that I pushed over, but he did jump out in front of me and, you know, he was in my way, but I'm really sorry that I pushed him over, but maybe he shouldn't have jumped out in front of me, yeah. but I am sorry that I pushed sorry, him over. So it, it, it did feel a bit sorry, not sorry, Dave. Yeah, and you can understand why... Uh... There's, there's going to be potential litigation over this. The guy filed a complete uh, police complaint after he got transported to hospital privately after after the game. It it, it feels almost as though uh, there's an opportunity here for somebody. I hope for I, I really hope that they're okay that they're not suffering any injury. I've seen that they've sustained whiplash and neck injuries. Uh, although again, oh, it's, 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 in, in typical uh, American fashion, the injuries have been described as non-life threatening, which you know, <laughs> uh, grabs headlines all the more. But but it is an unfortunate set of circumstances. I, I personally understand fully why Adams did it. I also think that he's possibly done himself no favours by doing it. He's been given a citation from the league. I'm not sure what that would lead to. Uh, but all in all, it, it, it's, it's something that he could have avoided being a bit more mature might have prevented him from from getting into some hot water. But I also don't really see what he did as a problem. And I understand why he's putting out his prevaricating apologies in, in, to, to preempt what might be coming his way. So, he's, yeah, um, unfortunate. He has been charged with misdemeanor, misdemeanor assault for pushing somebody over in the tunnel. And 
Look, it, let's be honest. The, the the real villain of the piece is 100% the cameraman who felt it necessary to file a police report after walking out in front of a, a guy that has almost led his team to victory only to be let down at the final minute. Look, you get exactly what's coming to you. And as Eric Cantona, the former Manchester United uh, striker, once said, my only regret was that I didn't kick him harder. Um, right, moving swiftly on. Finn's quarterbacks, Tua, injured, out. Teddy, forced out of the game at the weekend. Skyler, in. What is going on with the Dolphins, Dan? Uh, well, it's it's just that they've caused this problem themselves and they've caused a problem for the entire league, haven't they? Because we saw at the weekend, some of the calls and the protection of quarterbacks has just gone through the roof now. Um, but Teddy was taken out. He, he he got up from an injury and it was a play later. He got he was taken out of the game and he was taken out of the game because somebody operating the, the drone cam spotted that when he got up, he looked a bit gimpy on his walking. He then had to go into... Even though he'd passed the concussion protocol after the first tackle... He then had to go back in and then was pulled out of the game completely and is still in the concussion protocol as we speak now. Um, so this wasn't seen by any official. It wasn't seen by any doctors. It was seen by someone operating the drone cam. Um, and when we're at that stage, I think there's probably an overprotective side of it. Well, why should somebody that's a camera operator be allowed to make any kind of call? Uh, he's not He's not made the call. He's just, he's then, he what he's seen, he's then reported through to the officials. And that's going down to the sideline. He's been pulled out of the game. Does that make him a grass? Uh, absolute snitch, yeah. Snitch. Yeah, I mean, but what that does is creates a trial, an official trial, that they have been notified. Therefore, yeah. they're back in a position where if they don't do something, they're the ones who are going to be in trouble. But he'd passed the protocol. So the important thing is to, to say is that Teddy had been evaluated after the tackle and been approved to go back into the game. It was then reviewed that he'd had a wobble when he got up and walked, so he was pulled out of the game. Now, if you remember going back to the first tour injury, the back injury, Dave, um, if you remember when he stood up, he had an absolute wobble, and that, but that didn't count. Um, so that that I think it's just a resettling of the league's standards. I think they're just trying to figure it out. The so, last but, thing they want is somebody else coming out with it. But this is the new protocol, isn't it? So if you've what do they call it? A, 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 a neuromotor issue, where yeah. essentially, if you do one of them silly walks after having had a shot to the head, you are now not allowed back in the game. That's yeah. it. End of story. Yeah. No no amount of whether or not you pass the protocol will allow you back into the game. And I, I, it just it's all of a sudden, all of this for Raw seems to be surrounding the Dolphins at the minute because they're the ones that appear to be having all of the trouble. It, it It's not good for the league, Dave, if we get to a point where we're being over-cautious, is it? No, I mean, are, are we going to end up with flags on the quarterbacks and all you have to do is pluck the flag off them and the player's dead? Yeah, I keep seeing on the NFL website, flag football is the future. Um, mm -hmm. Flag football won't sell. It, 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 it's the competitiveness and, and, and the, the toughness of the players as they're going about their days, which, which are the draw. You can see other sports for tremendous athletes with a higher cardio output and less explosiveness elsewhere. Um, and yeah, it, it, flag football will never compete with other sports. It, it, it has to be football. It has to be contact. Otherwise, it's just going to lose the essence of the game. Unless you really look at rugby, which is becoming more physical because of the movement away from the physicality that the NFL is doing. And they don't want yeah. to be considered the, the least tough game in the world. I mean, it's still by far the best to watch. But yeah. I've said this before on, on Utter Punts. I'll say it again. There's a lesson to be learnt from rugby union at the moment and the way that they're going about dealing with head injuries, head injury assessments, pitch side injuries, the way that they deal with their concussion, concussion protocols without taking any of the physicality out of the game. They've done that essentially by being stricter around contact to the head. So instead of the, the injured party being pulled out of the game, there is a citation for anybody that initiates contact to the head. And all of a sudden what happens is people don't want to be missing games because their technique's wrong. They'd rather get their technique right, fewer shots to the head, and therefore stay in the game longer. It means the physicality is still there. It just puts the onus on the the contact initiator rather than the the, the person that's being contacted. We have that now in, in, in 
sort of many ways. So the sort of contact with or leading with contact with the helmet is 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 a is a flagrant foul. So it's a a personal foul. But I think unless you've seen one of these games in in la- in real life, you, I don't think you've got any idea to comprehend the speed of which these guys play each other uh, and the player and that it's impossible almost. They, they can't disappear, okay? So when they're going into a tackle, whether the guy is going to catch the ball or not makes that a foul or not. And so you're telling me that a, a guy running at 40, 30 miles an hour, fully pads on, has to then pull out of that tackle. It's impossible. And you see it now in, in sort of wide receivers and defensive backs. It's just, it's an impossible thing to take part of the game without taking away the game itself. Try it, man. I did it right on Monday night and he said, you've got to let, the dresses, take, let them take the dresses off and play. And I, I think he's probably got a point. Right, that's it. Headlines all wrapped up for you on Utter Punts for episode seven. Right, time to look back at last week's games before we look ahead to this week's games. What an absolutely mental week it was in week five of the NFL. Imagine this. Thursday night rolls around, you're ready for some NFL action, you flick on your TV, and this game looms onto the horizon. Colts at Broncos. Seven field goals, 12 punts, 25 third down stops, four interceptions, and six fumbles. The definition of scrappy. It finished 12-9 to the Colts too, which was exactly what we said it wasn't going to do. And just in case you weren't absolutely clear on this, we're not Russell Wilson's biggest fans on this podcast. This game is a perfect illustration as to why. Let's ride. Giants at Packers next. Let's go Giants! Not only was this a comeback win for Big Blue, but Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones both made big plays here to storm through to a 27-22 victory. Barkley's direct snap and crunching touchdown run in the fourth quarter, capping things off for the Giants. Here's Saquon Barkley on their 4-1 and one status. It's a great start. 4-1, um, and one, uh, you know, is where you want to be. Uh, but like I said, you can't can't get too caught up in it you just got to keep working um and there's a reason why we're four and one and that's because of the process and that's because you know we got guys coming to work and believe in the system and um you know setting the culture setting the standard and following it and uh that's what it means we got to continue to do that and if we continue to do that continue to believe in each other uh, when we look back at this thing, we'll, we'll be, be pretty excited. Dolphins at Jets. Yeah, this one was wider than we anticipated. The Jets careering past the Finns 40 points to 17 in East Rutherford. Losing Teddy Bridgewater for the Dolphins felt like a pretty pivotal moment early in this one. And when you can't get your offense going against the Jets, you're in trouble. Brees Hall making an impact for the Jets with his catch and run heroics topped off with a touchdown mean it was the franchise's first win against a division rival since toppling Buffalo in week 17 of the 2019 season. Next up, Cowboys at Rams. Right, let's have this right then. The Cowboys have now beaten both teams that contested Super Bowl 56 this season. Yep, they've beaten the Bengals and now they've beaten the Rams by 22 points to 10. They've also done all of this without Dak Prescott, who's still calling himself day-to-day with the thumb injury he picked up. This weekend's monster clash with the team that everyone's tipping for this season's Super Bowl could be special. We'll be keeping a close eye on the Eagles this weekend. Bengals at Ravens next, and the Ravens do love to keep games tight, don't they? This one was a 19-17 win over Cincinnati. Out of the five games they've played this season, three of them have been tighter than five points. And when games are going to be that close, you better pray that you've got the GOAT on special teams. Justin Tucker again proving he's the best kicker the NFL has ever seen. What matters in those 1.3 seconds between the snap, the hold, and the kick are the things that are going to help the kick go through the uprights. You know, so my my feelings, I've said this before, my feelings, you know, my emotions, for 1.3 seconds, they don't really matter whether I'm feeling very confident or, you know, nervous or even outright afraid. Um, you know, that's why, you know, partly why I always make it a point to say a brief prayer as I'm lining up the kick. Um, you know, not to ask for results, but to ask for peace and, uh, to show gratitude just for you know being able to be in that moment and bring joy to 
millions of fans who love watching Ravens win football games. Last up for this roundup, Raiders at Chiefs. And just don't upset Patrick Mahomes. Just, just don't upset him. Four touchdown passes giving the Chiefs the W in this one. But let's have it absolutely right. The roughing the passer call on Chris Jones, the defensive tackle, lit a fire under the Chiefs. So cross. The 10-point deficit turned around thanks to that motivation from some dubious officiating. Travis Kelsey latching on to all four passes from Mahomes to force the 30 points to 29 win. All right, all sorted. That's the wrap-up done and dusted. And uh, I think the only thing that we need to take away from this is do not upset Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. The second that you get under their skin, they will absolutely do you one way or the other. Uh, unless it's the Colts. Yeah, right? unless, oh, yeah, yeah, let's don't mention the Colts. Don't mention <laughs> I, the Colts. I hate uh, the Colts. Uh, yeah, we all hate the Colts. Uh, they're in the same bucket as Russell Wilson um, for, for this podcast in the absolute hatred box. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's no, it's it's not really hatred, but it's they're like pantomime oh, they, villains. They, so we'll, they've we'll brought it upon this. themselves. They're, I mean, it's no. not our fault. We, we, we tipped them to win their division at the start of the season. They've cost us for training. Still twice. might. <laughs> they still I mean, might. They, yeah, I mean, it's uh, only because it's an absolute. <laughs> cluster anyway um so yeah i mean we can't be blamed for what the cults have, cults have done to us it, it, it it's not right i nearly, nearly I agree with you Oops. <laughs> yeah I, I just um can i can i just say thank you so much for the self-editing that you do dave because <laughs> the editing the physical editing of this podcast could take an awful lot longer if you weren't self-editing as we went along <laughs> Uh, right, fantasy football is our next stop on Utter Punts. Now, normally we don't spend masses of time on fantasy football, but it's important this week because first bye week's coming around. So you just need to be paying attention to whether you've got anybody in your fantasy team that needs taking out, that needs replacing, that you might want to bring some waivers in. You might want to take a look at some free agents. I've done that already this week in terms of replacing a couple of bodies on injured reserve and uh, people that are out on bye weeks. I've seen it as an opportunity to make some changes. Um, anything that either of you want to add on this situation as we're, as we're getting into this? stage of the season I, I just I'll wanted just say, to I think congratulate Liam well done congratulations I wasn't even going to mention it Dave I was I was well you know done, Austin mate. Eckler went absolutely nuts couldn't do anything about that Justin Tucker put 15 points up uh, as a kicker just I can't do an awful lot about that Justin Jefferson had a great game I couldn't do much so he was just I was fortunate this week more than anything else well, you had God on your side as we heard in, in, in the uh, <laughs> <laughs> ain't that the truth said yeah. a little prayer didn't he the, the number of people in sort of concussion protocol as it stands, so like Pat Framey for the, the Steelers and there's a few wide receivers around and running backs in the concussion protocol, they probably won't get cleared to play until Friday or maybe Saturday or the day before the game. So just be very cautious. And, and if you've got any, I mean, if you've got any Bears or uh, Washington players in your team, I mean, you, you're probably in trouble anyway, but um, sort of put them into your, not out of your flex position. So you've got plenty of, as much time as possible to put the right team out on there on Sunday. Uh, right, that's it for fantasy. Um, did we beat Andy Bell this week? Yeah, I did. Yes, we beat yeah. Andy Bell. So that's two the, weeks in a row Andy team, Bell's been yeah. beaten. 15 and 1, it said. No, he can't finish better than 14 and 2. <sighs> I love it. Uh, gents, can I just uh, say, he's not here. He should be here. He's made a decision to not be here this evening, despite being back from his tour of the United States of America. So I think this gives us the right to misbehave slightly and call him all of the names under the sun. What do you think? He's not here tonight because he's gone to buy his partner a dog. Now, I arranged his partner to have a car, and I made it on time. So And he missed my stag do, but I survived it without him, and I'm here on time. And Dave's in Barcelona. Dave went home via Barcelona, and he made it. You know? And he's here on time. So I think he needs to take a long, hard look at himself for even thinking that of using yeah. his uh, using his missus as a... As a as an excuse for this, Dave, I'm going to let him get away with it for one reason and one reason alone. You're terrified of <laughs> terrified of his other half. No, he's gone to get a dog, so I'm, I'm all over that. It's, it's fine. If, if, if we need to, if we need to start off to go and get a dog, then then quite frankly, we should be allowed to do so. It, 100% Your sorry. holiday has made you soft. <laughs> yeah, it's taken uh, its toll on him. Yeah, it really has. Yeah, he's, well, he's in I'll, struggle I'll, town I'll, over I'll, there. I'll, uh, right, let's move on, shall we, to this week's game previews. <laughs> Right, 
There are some in here that are going to take us a little bit of time to get through, and there are some in here that really aren't. Guess what this fixture is going to be? Is it going to be one that's really, really quick or really, really slow? Washington Commanders at Chicago Bears Thursday night football. Dan? I'd I, I say I don't know where to start, but I'd, 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 just, I'd just prefer to finish, I think. It, it, listen, it's not it's not a great game, but as with NFL, you, you can find some some things to watch and some things to look out for. The, the Bears, actually, and I think last week was about as good as they'd been on offense. And, I mean, Dave probably not, Dave's probably seen it in a bit more detail, but Justin Fields did look all right. I think he threw for over 350 yards last week. Um, and he looked to have a lot more time and a lot more sort of presence at the back. And... I think he did a 50-yard run as well. I think it was called back with a, with a penalty, but still he's showing a little bit more flashes. Now, my concern is, that, was that just that the Vikings' defence just backed off a little bit? Um, so I don't really know. The, the commanders, um, I think that, that, that I've looked at some stats today, that they force more quick QB pressures than anybody else in the league, the commanders. So their front is clearly got a decent amount of power to it. The secondary is non-existent, though. Yeah. 11 touchdowns allowed, like... But, but the Bears haven't got any wide receivers and the fields can't get the ball to them. So my, my I'm thinking is sort of strength on strength, weakness on weakness. It, can the Bears hurt the commanders where they're weak? No. Can the commanders put some pressure on fields? Uh, yes, they can. Um, and ultimately, who do you trust more? The players like Terry McLaurin and, and players that have been there and players like Montez Sweat on the defence? Probably, yeah. Um, I mean, that, that, all of that being said, Dave, I, I mean, Kendall Fuller... In the in the Washington secondary is it's a little bit like where's Wally like he just goes missing and if Justin Fields can find a way to get a man open on Kendall Fuller then there is a chance here that that Fields can do a job isn't there? Now, the Vikings didn't actually pressure Fields at all after we we took the the twenty one three lead. Um, I think that was pretty obvious. He was just able to sit back there uh, against four man rushes, but there was never a fifth blitz. So it. <laughs> I don't anticipate Washington being quite so accommodating. Also, uh, Ron Riviera, when asked what the difference was between his team and everyone else in his division, uh, responded so quickly by saying quarterback, but he might just have lit a little fire under under Carson Wentz. So what I'd like to say, see is the over-under on the number of sacks in the game on account of the fact that I think both QBs are going to hold on to the ball too long. They're going to get pressured. If, if those pressures turn into sacks, you can see a very high number of sacks in the game and, and some low scoring, to be honest with you. Uh, whilst Dan is desperately searching for those stats, I'm going to uh, I'm going to make a call here. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Bears actually because I think I think Fields is just finding his feet. I'm gonna I'm gonna go Bears. Have you got that over under, Dan? Well, you can start at four, four plus sacks, Dave, or go up to seven plus sacks, but you'd need to put it in with something else. If what Dave's saying is right, and I, and I agree with him, that the, the Vikings made Fields just look a bit better than his, his stats in the um, in the last game. If you take that game out, he, he's not done much at all, and neither have they. And Washington have at least been a bit a bit feisty, and they've, they've put up a bit of a fight, and they, they put some points on the uh, on the Cowboys and, and they should have beaten the, the Titans, really. And if you can be in those games, you can certainly beat Chicago I would think um, my issue which is going back to Ron Rivera what he said saying that it's quarterback and it's about he went on to say it's that you know they've had quarterbacks in settled situations and he's talking about Daniel Jones who's had four different offensive coordinators in four years and Cooper Rush who's played five games so his point wasn't very valid at all and ultimately they signed Carson Wentz it wasn't Carson Wentz's fault um, but I think the commanders have too much here. I think I think the commanders probably take it. But I can see quite a few points. I, I can see it being a bit of a blow because I think, they'll, like Liam and, and you said, I think the defences will turn the ball over. I think you might get some short fields and I think that could add to a few points. So the points range, Dave, is 35 up. So you could maybe go 35 points and, and four plus sacks if you wanted. Under. Under 35. Mm, or over. over. Interesting. Which way are you plumping, Dave? Uh, I'm going to go with the commanders. I think the Wentz will have a point to prove. And like I say, I, I don't think we, we applied anywhere near as much pressure on, on fields uh, as they will. Uh, so, yeah, definitely, definitely the commanders or Washington. Washington. Uh, that took longer than I thought it was going to, to be completely honest with you. I thought that one was going to be the quickie. It turned out to be just as long as everything else that we do here on Utter Punts. I would like to, um, I would like to qualify my pick with... 
I did watch that Netflix special with Justin Fields in it and I have been shouting his name for a little while. I believe when I was co-manager of Dan's fantasy team last season, I suggested that we should pick up Justin Fields as a... Yeah, but you're not allowed reserve. an opinion. So. Yeah, no, and that's... I am I am now allowed an opinion. <laughs> uh, moving swiftly on before this takes a turn that I don't want it to take. Uh, Sunday, six o'clock game, the Niners at the Falcons. I think we were all surprised to see this one get picked for the telly again the Niners on one of the TV games they are beat up the Niners but they're on two straight wins and I think they're probably favourites for this one Dan yeah, they are they're not as heavy a favourite as, as I thought they might be um, considering they're playing the, the Falcons um, and how well they've how good they've looked in the past couple of weeks but they're, they're sort of one to two they're only like a three point favourite um, but I've just looked at some of the sort of the injury news and and Kyle Pitts and Drake London both back at training this uh, today. They both put it back to practice today and full, fully trained. So they should both be back. And I think the Falcons will, uh, are probably good enough to score some points then because Emmanuel Mosley, the sort of the star cornerback of the, the 49ers, is now out for the season. So he had an interception return for a touchdown on Sunday and then went out of the game later on with an ACL, I think. So he's out for, He's out of the game. So this could be this could be a lot closer than, than you sort of think. And actually, I'm... I'm going to quite enjoy watching this on Sunday. I think it's quite an interesting game to watch. Um, I don't think the Falcons are a bad team and I think the 49ers are a very good team so they should win but this could be um, this could be really spicy. Dave, how do you see it going? It's, it's a couple of quarterbacks from pretty much the same, you know, tier in the league, uh, Garoppolo and, and Mariota. Um, Garoppolo's got a better track record in terms of wins. Mariota's got a bit more experience and for me he's probably been playing better this season. Um, I'm going to go Falcons. I'm going to go Falcons. Yeah. I think I'm probably going to go Niners. But <clears throat> one more question before we before we wrap this up. Atlanta were another one of those teams that were mired in a strange rough in the passer call last week, weren't they? Does that work for or against Jimmy Garoppolo? Like... Are they going to be a little bit more lax this week because they got it wrong last week and that will allow them maybe to get at Jimmy? Or does it give him a little bit more protection? I think Jimmy's a better protected even than than, than Tom Brady is. Um, I know uh, Trent Williams is still out, but they've still got a very good front line. And, and I think they will... Jeff Wilson's going to have a big game here for the 49ers. I think they will run the ball all day on the Falcons. And I, I think the Falcons will try and do the same thing back. So even though they've not got Cordell Patterson, I can see the two... Two guys at Atlanta, I think it's is it Altier and, and Huntley. I think I can see them both having big games and keeping each other fresh. So um, I, I looked at this game, Dave, as a thought of a sort of under points. I, I don't think it'll be as high scoring as as the sort of bookies think it's going to be. They've put a line that's sort of fifty one to sort of about fifty one points. I, I think it could be well under that. Um, and I'd, I'd, I'd probably err on the side of you can get six and a half points with the Falcons. That that might be that might be enough with, with a low scoring game. That seems reasonable to me. Uh, good. Um, look, I think Dan's got a point. The Atlanta Rush D, though, has been either brilliant or shite all season. Yeah. Last week, they were brilliant. Week before, they were shite. So, uh, if they do run the ball all day long, it really does depend which Atlanta Rush defence turns up. I think I'm going Niners. Dan? I'd, I'd go Niners to win the game, certainly. Yeah. And for some strange reason, Dave's gone the Falcons. Falcons but, you know, he likes, all, all he likes bird teams. <laughs> you do like bird teams, don't you? I can get you can get seven and a half points on the Falcons, Dave. Would you? Do you think that's probably more value than the, Fal the Niners giving away two and a half? Oh, 100%. I do. I do, yeah. yeah. All right, good stuff. That one, uh, nice and straightforward. Now, here's a tasty old affair. There are two games this uh, this weekend that I'm really, really looking forward to. This is the first of them. Sunday, 25 past nine. It's Buffalo Bills at Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs back at home at Arrowhead. And I, look, Mahomes and Kelsey, I'm not sure there's a better quarterback tight end combination in the league. Allen to Diggs, I'm not entirely sure you could name me a better quarterback to wide receiver combo in the league. This could be brilliant. This could be absolutely brilliant, Dave. Justin Jefferson threw a pass of the weekend. So I'm calling him a quarterback and I'll go Justin <laughs> Jefferson to Justin Jefferson. Um, <laughs> that would be brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, it, it is pretty special and I, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I think a lot will come down to, to have a defence who's played on both teams. Um, 
it'd be interesting to see whether or not the, 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 the Chiefs' offense can keep varying things up. They're going out. Of, they're, every, every every bit of film that they're putting on tape, people are going to see more of what they're doing in terms of getting other people open. And at some point, they're going to come up against somebody who is able to clamp down on it a little bit like the Colts did when they were blown out of the train. The damn train, the train is gone. Um, and yeah, we've, we've, there's just so much going on in terms of the, the, the depth of, the, of both passing offences. I can see it being quite a high-scoring game. But if you can't establish the run, if, if, if teams are having to tee off on each other in the passing game, then we can see quite a few sacks happening in this game as well. So they're very interested to see quite how the, the defensive coordinators play. I expect them to blitz, uh, but if you blitz against Mahomes, you, you could get top chewed up. Is the Kansas City secondary, Dan, a bit of a weakness, especially with the depth of the receiving core for the Bills? Yeah, I mean, I, the, the Bills receiving core isn't isn't deep, deep. I think mean, they've not got sort of five or six guys, but their, their top two are as good as anything. I mean, we saw some of the, 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 the catches from Gabe Davis over the weekend where he's, I mean, on the second one, he's just bullied Minka Fitzpatrick, which is just great to see. Um, I, I I think this is going to be a really one-sided game. Um, I think we, on the, on the first prediction we made in this on this podcast was the Bills to, smashed the Rams in week one because they had a point to prove and they'd been waiting six months for the game to come round. I think they've been waiting to get the Chiefs locked in a room again for a long time and I can see them blowing the doors off the Chiefs a little bit here and I can see their, their defensive front causing fits for Mahomes. Max Crosby had a great game against them on, on was it Sunday night? Monday Crosby, night. He had a great, great game. He, and he is, he is. Uh, pass rush for the Raiders. So. That's that's kind of what I mean. So he, they had one guy. I mean, he's very, very good. He's, he's probably top three in the league. But the Bills have got four or five of those guys on that front. And we saw, we've seen what they've done to not great offensive lines. I think the Chiefs is still a work in progress. I, I, I can see the Chiefs, I can see the Bills blowing the doors off the Chiefs and it being double figures. I, difference I really can wow all right okay so let's get a, let's get an idea of where we think the uh where we think this one's going to fall Dave which way are you going yeah I'm I'm, I'm actually going to go away from, from from what Dan said I'm going to go with the Chiefs um just simply because I think at the moment Mahomes has got the mental edge uh we'll see whether or not Alan can, can get something back on him I'm going to go Bills and here's my reasoning all right I think the Chiefs over the last four weeks have been maybe a little over reliant on the brilliance of Pat Mahomes. I think maybe there's been a little bit of Pat will get us out of the hole that we've put ourselves into, as was proved last week when they got a little bit angry and a little bit het up and they overturned that ten point deficit against the Raiders. I just I just don't think they can win against the Bills reliant on Pat Mahomes, however brilliant he is. So, Bills for me. I will happily yeah. die on this hill. Happily. <laughs> uh, Dan, you're sticking, with the, you're sticking with the Bills? Yeah, I, th- I think if this game was in, is in Orchard Park in Buffalo, I think it, it could be very one-sided and probably even two scores. I think with it being an hour ahead, it'll be closer. I think the Bills by a touchdown at least, though. Good stuff. Right, moving swiftly on to the Sunday late game. Dallas Cowboys at Philadelphia Eagles. This one is, for me, the second best game of the weekend. I'm going to put Bills at Chiefs up there as my favourite game of the weekend. Cowboys at Eagles, though. Look, the NFC East is back, Dan. The NFC East is back on the map. I mean, they all get to play each other twice, so it does inflate their scores slightly. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Um, I don't know. It'd be nice to see Dallas play a decent team, a, a team that can really stop them on offense because they've beaten the Commanders, they've beaten the Giants, fair enough. We knew they were going to beat the Rams. It was a terrible matchup for for LA and they beat the Bengals before the Bengals were really sort of motoring. So I, I don't think they've beat anybody. And as good as they've been, and fair play to them, they've, they've clearly got a defense that can stop teams, but I don't think they can stop the Eagles. And I don't think they can score 20 points on the Eagles. So for me, it's, it's going to be an absolute massacre. Dave, they're just too good both sides of the ball, aren't they, the Eagles? They are, and uh, I don't like that because I don't particularly like the Eagles. I don't particularly like Philadelphia. In fact, I had a better Philadelphia Chiefs cake in New York than I did in Philadelphia. That's how, how little regard cheese, cheese, I have Cheese Cheesecake or cheese steak, which? But both. <laughs> <laughs> Very Brilliant. much both. New, New York cheesecake, Philadelphia cheese steak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But um, yeah, oh, I, I hate the fact that they're as good I, as they are. They're so, they're so well managed, um, and it, it, it honestly sickens me. I I don't even like that that comedy show about Philadelphia. Like, what is it? Well, it's because it's, it's always, always raining. Yeah. It's, it's, always, sunny, yeah, it's not always sunny yeah. in Philadelphia. It's just lies. No, no, um, no. I, I love this. Just grumbly Dave in the corner. Uh, Hertz, Hertz is improving with the ball in the air, and I think that's even more worrying, given how good they are on both sides of the ball anyway. To see a, a quarterback like Jalen Hertz improving through the air, as well as like Sanders averaging five yards a carry this season... That offense should blow away that that Cowboys defense, regardless of how good they've been so far. I mean, I don't I don't know if they'll blow them away because the the, the Cowboys front can will, will be able to cause damage, but they're so going good. against probably the, one of the best offensive lines and, and game plans in in the business. And I don't think they'll have enough answers on the back end of it. And you know, you you, you put a you put a top twenty quarterback it, it behind a really good line in a really good scheme with really good receivers, a great tight end, and three running backs. They're going to look a much better, and I think Hertz is better than that. Um, I just I, I think this will be the, the I think this will be the Cooper rush down to earth game. I can just see it really crashing down around Dallas and them then desperate for have to have that back next week. I, is it Bill Walsh said you you are what your record said you are, Dave? And I, I, I think he's wrong with the Cowboys. Absolutely right with the Steelers. Good to see that they're not on the telly again this week, though. They'll be on my telly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, Monday's game next up for us: Broncos at Chargers. I'm going home. How are the Broncos on the TV again? Well, when they, when they put the listings out, they looked like they were going to be the team in the AFC West, didn't they? You know, they've got a new superstar oh, quarterback, and they've got all this firepower. And a great Let's ride. Let's ride. Um, God Almighty! <laughs> uh, look, let, instead of instead of focusing on um, pantomime villain Russell Wilson, the most cringe man in the NFL, let's instead look at uh, Austin Eckler, who seems to be coming good for the Chargers, doesn't he? He had an absolutely monstrous week last week and a good week the week before, hundred yards plus both weeks. He could be the key here against the Broncos if they can get him up and running. He, he's he's so dangerous. Yeah, they, they've they had some offensive line issues, so they lost. Um, I can't remember the, the I can't remember his name, but the, the left tackle went out of the game, and he's Rashawn Slater. They, he went out of the game a few weeks ago, and their centre went out as well. But both of them were were all pro sort of offensive linemen, and they really struggled the week after to protect Herbert, even though he had broken ribs at the time against Jacksonville. Since then, the guys they brought in, they, they seem to have really set up a really good running attack. So they they've really simplified it because. Blocking for rushing, is, they they say, is much simpler than blocking for, for pass protection. Okay, So what they've done is they've really simplified what they're doing. And it's brought Eckler really into his own. And it's the quick pass game. And it's the um, and I wonder if it's with Keelan Allen being out as well, that Herbert's not looking down the field as much. He's just getting the ball out quicker. Uh, but they look much slicker. That Their pace has gone up certainly much quicker. They're certainly playing much, much faster. And I think that really suits them because Eckler is such a good player. Um, and getting him into space as they can now makes such a big difference and that's why they've started winning games and that's why they'll smash the Broncos on Monday. My primary concern is around the durability of Ekelor. I think uh, he, yeah. he, he he is taking so many carries at the moment and, and obviously he's still catching yeah. the ball out of the backfield as well. He's not a huge frame person. I, I can see him getting broken down a little bit uh, if he's going to keep getting used to, to this degree. Um, and I think against the Broncos front, he, he, he could be in for some heavy hitting. So uh, particularly with the new protocols in place, I, I, I wouldn't be banking on him lasting too much longer without having to take some time out injured uh, because he does run with a very a very low head um, and he, he, he does absorb contact to the helmet. I've seen him, I've seen him shaking up a few times in the past decade and he normally is able to come back on the field and carry on, but he won't be able to uh, with the new protocols. Yeah, with the yeah with the protocols in place. Um, the the one thing that I would say is that last week, and, and I don't want to say nice things about Denver really, but they were pretty good on defending the pass last week, which means that that might force the Chargers into using Eckler more than they would want to to make sure that they get their run game going. Yeah, we, we, we've said, I think, I don't know how many times now, numerous times, that Denver just want to destroy the game. They want to break it down and make it really messy. 
Um, my my concern with with this is that if they get into a tight game with the, the Chargers, the, the Chargers are likely to blow it because I, I'm not I'm still not convinced about Brandon Staley, and I, and I think some of the I think some of the players are starting to get a little bit frustrated with them as well. There was a Keenan Allen was tweeting as they were playing the other night against the Browns. Um, saying what what the f are we doing when he's going for it on fourth down? Um, there seems to be a little bit of dissension. So I think if the Broncos can get close to them and sort of keep it close, I think the Broncos can probably pull this one off. Believe it or not, um, I think it'll be very very tight. Um, and if it's a tight game, I'd go I'd go Broncos. I think, but it's hard to pick. I don't really want to pick them. If the Chargers blow them out, which they could, it could be twenty five ten or something, or you know twenty five seven. Um, and if it's a close game, it's going to be sort of 16 all. So I, I don't think we're getting anywhere near 50 points. Mm, yeah. Either way, because it's only one of those two things that'll happen. So um, maybe take the under. Mm. Um, uh, I Yeah, okay, let's let's just make the pick. I'm going to go Chargers just because as much as I say, you know, never bet against Brady, I'm also going to put a new rule in place that you should never bet for Russell Wilson. I'm, I'm going to try something here because it, it worked last week by accident. I think that Russell Wilson is one of the 10 best human beings to have walked the planet and that he will surely leave the Broncos to victory and not in any way get knocked out on the first play from scrimmage. <laughs> He's tried to teddy him. I love it. I love it. Uh, which way are you go, Dave? You're definitely going Chargers, yeah? <laughs> no, I'll go Broncos just in the home back. <laughs> uh, Dan? Chargers. Yeah, okay, I'm going Chargers too. Uh, right, given um, that we've now previewed all of the games that are happening over the weekend, we are going to change tack ever so slightly around uh, our train bet. Um, this because the train is currently... Um, burst into flames on a siding and uh, is no longer running. So we're sorry about that. It just hasn't quite worked out the way that we wanted it to work out. So we've decided to sort of change the way that we're going to do it. Do you want to explain the theory behind it, Dan? And then we'll talk about what bets we're going to put on this week. Yeah, I, th I think we were just getting a bit too delicate with it, to be honest, um, rather than just going what we thought was going to happen, which actually does turn out more right than wrong. But we're just going to go through. So the three Sky games on a Sunday, we're going to leave the Thursday night game out of it because you don't want it gone before you get to the weekend. Also, who wants to best on the Commanders this week? That's it. Um, and then you got your Monday night football, you've got too long to wait for your money. So um, so rather than watching Red Zone, if you're going to just watch the Sky games on a Sunday, the 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and then the late game, what we've said is we're just going to put one bet out of each of those and make it a treble. So it's going to be much more than even money. Um, so you probably don't need to put anywhere near as much as it on. Um, but... So this week, for example, the first game, six o'clock, Falcons and Niners. We've, we've gone for the Falcons. We, we thought we like the Falcons to keep it close, even though we think the Niners have probably got in too much for them. But we do think the Falcons getting seven and a half points is too much. So we've put them in plus 7.5. The Chiefs and Bills, we can't really decide. Well, they can't really decide who they think is going to win. Um, so we've just gone for over points because they can get 51 and a half points, which we think is too low. And that'll be a shootout. And then in the final game, the Eagles Cowboys, we all think the, Cow the Eagles will have too much. And we've just put the Eagles in for a straight win. So um, Falcons plus 7.5, over 51.5 on the Kansas uh, City Bills game, and the Eagles to win outright. £10 on that pays £38.80 back, so nearly £40. So we'll stay at the start with that this week and we'll see how we go. But good luck. Uh, we will, uh, going forward, we'll try and pick the three. Um, bets that we like the most as we've done the previews we'll give those to you at the end of the podcast don't forget you can always uh, re-look at what we've decided on our Instagram and Twitter pages on Instagram just search for Utter Ponce it's Utter Ponce UK if you want the direct username on Twitter we are Utter Ponce Pod and don't forget we're on YouTube as well like share with a friend uh, make sure that if you know somebody that likes the NFL you're pointing them in our direction <laughs> Chaps, it's the two-minute warning and it's time for our Utter Punts of the Week nominations. Uh, right, this is the point of the programme where we have two minutes left and all of us have to come up with our Utter Punt of the Week. This is the person that is essentially the NFL's biggest villain. Uh, we are going to start this week with Dave Keane in Barcelona. Yeah, I'm going to take the photographer who got pushed over by Devontae Adams, not for jumping in front of him, although you could argue that he should have known better it's privileged to be out on the touchline uh, among the players. And he just watched the end of an emotional game and somehow thought it was appropriate to step in front of the player as well left the field. 
but more because he then went to hospital and filed a police report. Uh, it's entirely up to him, of course, and if he feels that a crime's been committed against him, fair enough. I wouldn't let him anywhere near my stadium in the future if I was the NFL because I would not trust him to take appropriate action. Punty behaviour. Really punty behaviour. Uh, Dan? Uh, Hunter Renfro, wide receiver of the, Ra- of the, of the Raiders. So two, three weeks ago, he got he got he forced off. He was fumbled. He fumbled the ball in overtime against the Cardinals. That was recovered for a touchdown, lost in the game. Uh, this week, he tripped up his number one wide receiver on his way out to catch a ball to win them the game again. If Hunter Renfro didn't exist, they'd be three and two. And uh, if he didn't exist, you can almost guarantee that Devontae Adams wouldn't currently have a misdemeanor assault charge against him for pushing over a photographer. I'm going to go. With a referee. First time we've done this, I'm going to go with Carl Cheffers. It was the referee in the Raiders Kansas City game. Um, look, that, that's never a rough in the passer call. In a million, it's just not. It's just not a rough in the passer call. And what you've actually done is you've lit a fire underneath the Kansas City Chiefs. You're the one that's responsible for the result for the Raiders. You're the one that's responsible for Hunter Renfrew tripping over Devontae Adams. You're the one that's responsible for Devontae Adams pushing over the cameraman. You're the one that's responsible for the police report that's been put in by the cameraman. It all starts with the referee. Shocking behaviour. Carl Cheffers, you are a punt. More root cause uh, analysis to punts next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's all logic, Dave. You just got to take it back. Uh, it, always a pleasure having you here, Dan. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Dave. Enjoy your rest of your time in Barcelona, won't you, pal? Pleasure. Pleasure. Yeah, every week's the same thing. Right, we'll see you again next week on Not a Punt. Not a punt.